Hello, everybody. Welcome to hashtag Immersive Joe Kali, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. It is my pleasure, my honor, my privilege to be presenting to you about the Norma XR experience. So let's dive in. My name is Nyambora Warengi. I am a XR producer, creator, as well as have a long background in documentary and uh, fiction filmmaking. XR really created for me a different way of looking at storytelling and different visual vocabulary. So it was really exciting to um, be the artistic director and creator of Norma, working with the different artists as well as the different partners. And it really fell in line with Akoya and Company, which is uh, the creative enterprise of which I'm a founder and creative director of, where we hashtag imagine radically and we welcome all of you to hashtag come play. Akoya, our mantra forever is Bell Hooks's uh, quote, the function of art is to do more than tell it like it is, is to imagine what is possible. So at every point we are really working with the team to figure out what's, what's, what's the thing that we're interested in that we want to explore and imagine beyond its possibilities that are offered right now. So welcome to Noma. Noma was an XR uh, location-based experience we had uh, we had the six of uh, headsets, tablets, mobile phones. It was AR, VR, the various activities. It was a beautiful vernissage that opened um, the, the XR experience. We ensured that we were part of the community by running students programs, artist talks. And we also had an East African industry talk, which was really great with Honor Studio, uh, with Honor Stories, the beautiful and amazing team of uh, XR uh, creators and producers running out of uh, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Our audience, um, it was varied. We had a breakdown basically of artists. We really welcomed the general public, which was um, really amazing because a lot of people did show up. Usually with this type of shows, you expect that it would be, you know, the technologists, that people were experimenting, mainly artists, younger people. But one thing that really touched my heart was to see people from all walks of life walk into the auditorium that we had created and had really worked on the production design to really create an immersive experience. And obviously um, the middle school kids who uh, really challenged us as we went along and different industry stakeholders. So before I continue, I'd really like to thank uh, Black Rhino VR who uh, provided the technology and really started the state of the art program. And this whole initiative was financed by Jenga CCI uh, that is run uh, out of Gote Institute in Nairobi. With Noma, what we were doing is really getting different artists to come and experiment. What would be possible if paintings, drawings, collages, mixed media um, was brought into this space? How would we go visual artists from 2D if they experimented in an infinite world? And we had Ngene, Maura, Michael Misioka, Petros Ndunde, Imaus, who you'll see in some of the slides, Ijaka, Silamwake, and Virgadi. The tools that we used that we got the artist to experiment with um, were Quill, Oculus Medium, Tilt Brush, Google Blocks, Cinema 4D2, and Gravity Sketch. So before I go on, I'd like to welcome you and for you to have a peek at what happened at the Noma experience when, when the doors opened and everybody walked in. The Noma XR experience was something that really inspired me to think even more broadly about and around uh, new media and artistic expressions because it feels infinite um, in many ways and the curatorial process was daunting because this was the first time I was working externally with different partners Unlike when I bring different partners together, it was really being presented with an idea that I would then participate in creating the experience around it, which would be the output of the artwork. So what was daunting was really having to manage and work with the different partners, and that was Black Rhino VR and uh, Jenga CCI, in ensuring that in the programming framework and the experience, both partner needs were met. 
my favorite point in time is mostly a creative development where you're building the property. And that is, you know, sitting with the screenwriters. So for me, quit session, sitting with the artists, sitting with production team that is now sitting with the tech guys, seeing how we're actually gonna make it happen. What next uh, that interests me is usually marketing and distribution. So how do you then link up with your audience? How do you find your audience? For me, the paradox about new media is that it's actually not new. What's new is the technology. The technology is evolving to do that, but we've been doing it. And that's why it's also very exciting that oral literature, something that Melissa Lella uh, speaks about in our panel discussion, is now very well suited for a VR space, uh, AR experience, because of the way we interact with it. It is a, com it's a communal consumption, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not within a f just one frame, it, it happened around you. And suddenly this type of uh, technology, you can now enjoy it in this way. So it's really great to have an opportunity where we're also in a position of knowledge and a position of knowledge sharing. You know, it's not a colonial approach to it. And then having that exchange, so. It was really cool and don't stop imagining radically. So thank you for joining the Noma ride. And now that you've experienced Noma, um, Noma uh, premiered in Nairobi, Kenya and uh, Nairobi, Kenya is considered the Silicon Savannah. Now, um, I have some questions uh, for you, uh, for you to let me know what you, you know, what you think about the technological capacity, the technical capacity for XR experiences to exist, particularly um, online. So the polls are running on the right hand side. So let's play. So as the polls are gonna be running, I'll tell you more about Noma. Um, one of the things is we had uh, quests, um, had the Oculus Quest, the Rift, we had goals with um, also some videos for, uh, for the middle schoolers to enjoy. But since we had a limited um, amount, what I decided to do is create a series of games that will keep people interacting with each other, as well as um, you know, participating in the experience. So one of them, as you can see here, is the Noma Poker. What I wanted people to do is every person who walked in picked a card, and in them picking up a card, they had to look for seven other people to complete the deck of cards, and uh, yeah, they got different prizes. So that was also a fun way of creating the experience just beyond um, just watching the VR and the AR. We also had the Dodecagon, which was a takeaway that um, you can also see there's a QR code running that gave you access to um, the website as well as a playlist of music from Nairobi. And this is what we had. I initially had imagined that it would work for uh, the middle schoolers, but as you can see, the adults were very much into it. And that's what it looked at the end of it. And this was another fun part. Um, the middle schoolers came in and uh, they actually challenged us a lot asking us you know, why can't we learn using this VR? And they're more interested in understanding how they can get to learn um, their lessons through VR and AR. Uh, one of the artists was on um, was in sight with the kids. His name is Imaos Kimani. And that was also important for me for people to interact with the artist and the work. So it's not an abstracted feeling. Yeah, that's, that's them having a lot of fun. So um, one of the things around um, creating the Norma XR experiences uh, was really looking at, so we're creating XR experiences, we're working with visual artists to really use VR and AR tools to expand on their praxis. And so when I look at the successes of this, turns out there's an insatiable, an insatiable audience for the XR experiences via smartphone across ages. Ordinarily, we tend to think it's a younger crowd, but there were older people who participated and were very much into learning and, and really seeing how they could experience art in different ways. We had the whole notion of new production and collaboration styles, because at this point, 
um, the visual artists were used to working, you know, by themselves. It's a kind of solitary practice, but now they're working with coders, they're working with artistic director, uh, they're working with a UX designer, UI designer. So it was very interesting for them to understand that their work is being held in custody too um, and uh, with other people. Uh, and that was something that they really uh, were, they changed in the ways that they interacted with their work, understanding that this is now a collaborative experience. Um, a lot of what we learned is that we can have XR music gaming in one location across devices. And that's what the XR experience, the normal XR experience was. People came, they were entertained, they got to see VR, AR work, they got to play games, they got to make games too. Um, it was really exciting, particularly for myself, having the career that I've had. And when I moved back to Kenya, recognizing that there's a whole movement around culture for development. But this was one of the times that we really did art for art's sake and experimentation. And that was really exciting. And that really created an evolution in the digital arts practice, in the visual arts space. And now also, um, I mean, that was in February uh, 2020. But now with the NFTs coming in, it really is showing a difference in terms of marketplace and audience. There's an evolution in visual language. And um, we started thinking about how do we uh, in the video, I mentioned Melissa Alela and her concentration on working in terms of XR and focus on oral literature. Then we also had discussions with the museums and all these different heritage spaces that really thought that XR can be a way that they then also bring in younger people to experience a museum in a different way. And more importantly, um, is I, I do speak about the colonial project of art and work in the video, uh, I do have a mention. Uh, we were also working with how we can work with a different language. A lot of technology is in English and then needs translations, but we also need translations into our own languages. So we started talking about that with the artists. If we were to develop uh, a book around how we transition as visual, and, as visual artists into uh, using XR technology, uh, what language would we use? And that was really a very edifying experience. So when it comes to the challenges, as you can see in bold, access, access, access. And access really is dictated by the technological, technical capacity that we all have. Um, this is one of the quotes from Sila Mwake, one of the artists that I absolutely love. What we did is we interviewed the artists and part of you know, uh, the production design was to have different quotes. And Sila Mwake talked about we have been making history since we were born. I mean, my first steps. Anything about my life is making history. We know we're making history. Anything that I do will be history. And that really is an artist sitting in this space and sitting in that influence on the work that they do. And it's really important for us um, coming from the continent, coming from Nairobi, coming from different boroughs in Nairobi, is that we are part of history making and history is not make, being made for us. And particularly in the visual arts space and as we explore different technologies. So uh, let's check out your responses. I'm, I'm really keen to see um, what you thought about, uh, you know, the technological capacity and the technical capacity uh, in the uh, space called Nairobi, dubbed the Silicon Savannah. All right, so um, let's see how many of us got this right. So mobile telephony in Kenya, penetration is 91%. Mobile internet and penetration rate in Kenya is 83%. Uh, I know for some, you might have found that uh, uh, maybe staggering or didn't expect that, but th those are the numbers. Um, the preeminent uh, mobile operating system is the Android and it has 90% market share. The top three apps are Facebook, TikTok, and WhatsApp. Um, most visited website, Google, and Kenya's dominant pastime is sports betting. So technically we're primed for gaming <laughs> and making money. And our average uh, data bundle usage is 10 MB per day. So uh, as you can see, um, it's, it's a little bit different here in Nairobi um, and 
parts of Kenya, particularly the towns and more urbanized spaces, uh, where the possibility of using mobile telephony uh, for XR experiences, sharing them, making them, um, and also for web XR is really optimal. So what does this mean for Kenya? That mobile first and location-based experiences are the bridge to the headset. Um, infrastructural shifts are taking place and we're going to forge penetration. Um, we're looking at data bundles. There's an expense reduction that's being, um, that, that is being anticipated further going down the line, but Unfortunately, with what has been going with the what has been going on with the economy, I think that's going to be paused for a while. But it, it has been progressively getting cheaper to buy data bundles. Um, there's locally produced XR hardware to meet audience demand, which I think shifts uh, ways in which um, you know from market leaders in terms of global market leaders when it comes to headsets. The moment we start having our own uh, XR hardware, it's cheaper and therefore meets um, audiences at the pocket. Uh, production of web AR experiences are what's becoming more common and also mobile apps for XR experiences. And as you have seen in terms of mobile telephony and what can happen on the smartphone, uh, this is the way to go. Now, uh, something happened this past weekend or week, uh, Netflix proposed that they were going to roll out a specific, um, um, for the mobile, basically Netflix for the mobile phone in Kenya for about $3. So you can see that there is a push to understanding that this is a mobile first experience of life as if you want to uh, be participating in a kind of mass economy. And then, you know, there are people who have uh, access to headsets and laptops and all of that, but understanding if you're going to attract audiences and numbers, you're looking at the mobile phone. So in terms of going from Kenya to global, one thing is to understand that it is not just about mobile versus headset. It's about thinking about how we can make content across different platforms and kind of being headset agnostic, but understanding that we can create for the headset, but how else can we work uh, that allows us to bridge that. Then also producing for pre-existing AR and VR apps for global reach. So as much as we have access here, is how are we able to maximize on the VR and AR apps on, uh, on the phone that are available in order to reach a global audience? So that's really how I, I look at um, Kenya into global in terms of XR experiences, particularly for the mobile phone as we're bridging towards getting to the headset. So um, one of uh, really interesting um, turns is that as we've been, you know, XR has been around in Kenya for maybe the past six years. Um, and through that, Hatchery 360, which is a Kenyan based company, is creating Wildcard VR, which is an affordable headset for about 2000 Kenyan shillings, which is $2. And they also curate content. So they create, curate and create XR uh, content that uh, locally produce XR content that can be viewed on this Wildcard VR which is currently available. Uh, made by Eden, you have the Snacker. It's a different type of headset that doesn't go over your head and you can hold and they've got various um, um, really iterations of it. Uh, some are really fancy and they look, it just looks like this absolutely fanciful headset, but it's a different way of interacting with the headset and these are innovations that are coming out of Africa. So thank you very much for joining me on hashtag Immersive Jua Kali. Uh, Jua Kali really means um, kind of self-made, uh, entrepreneurial, and um, really locally sourced and based. So Immersive Jua Kali is really looking at the local ways that uh, creators, technologists, producers, institutions are using immersive storytelling and immersive technology within the space in Nairobi and the East Africa region. So initially I had mentioned to you that uh, we had an East Africa panel that was part of NOMA. And as you can see, um, on the left is Tulanana Ohela. And one, and the gentleman in the middle is called Princely Glorious. And they come from Ona Stories in Dar es Salaam. And they have um, a production house that is, does not, that produces both linear 
and VRAR productions. And one of the films uh, premiered at the Zanzibar Film Festival this May, May, June. So really excited for them. And um, we're looking forward to more conversations uh, in how we can get people watching and using XR. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, you can always find out about Noma and uh, Akoya and Company projects at uh, akoya.africa for the information that I use, the free downloads at nando.co.ke will tell you really about how the digital space is evolving in Kenya and in the region. And you can find a Koyan company uh, on IG at a Koya Co, on Facebook at a Koyan company and on YouTube at a Koya Africa. And thank you to Lame Corina for uh, the beautiful photography that he did. So thank you, Merci Shukran. And always remember, hashtag imagine radically and hashtag complain. And the function of art is to do more than tell it like it is. It's to imagine what is possible. Thank you, Bill Hooks, for this. Thanks, guys. <laughs>